Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Khaldun Azari. I'm president of this club, and I have the great honor to have you today. Happy New Year, and uh, as in every year, we start uh, with having great hope for the following days and months. And here today in the club, we also uh, start with a big hope. But uh, this hope is different a little bit from the usual hope we have. It's a big party established in Japan uh, recently, and it starts uh, to uh, shape the Japanese politics in a different way. And the best uh, person to talk about this uh, hope is the leader of this party, uh, Mr. Ryuichiro uh, Tamaki, uh, the president of the Party of Hope. And he will uh, tell us a lot about uh, his party and the politics expected uh, this year after a lot of turmoil last year during the elections. And uh, I'm very glad to see Tabaki since he's, I met him in many years ago when he was the foreign ministry. He was the head of the Jordan desk in the foreign ministry and was and still correspondent of Petra News Agency. So he helped me a lot. He helped me a lot in collecting some news about Japan and Japan's foreign policy. So we expect today some talk about uh, the foreign policy of the Japanese government and his party in particular. And today uh, event will be for about uh, uh, one hour and it will uh, start with a speech in English for about 20 minutes, including some slides and PowerPoint. And uh, it will be uh, later on uh, continued in a question and answer session. Uh, in Japanese, so you can ask in Japanese if you don't speak English. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome our guest speaker today, Mr. Yamaki, President of Party of Hope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Azhari. Um, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I appreciate this great opportunity uh, to talk with you today. Uh, my name is Yuichiro Tamaki. Uh, I became the leader of Kibo no To, the Party of Hope, last November. Um, as you might know, the, our party was founded by Governor uh, Yuriko Koike, uh, Governor of Tokyo, um, last year. <coughs> the, at the national election uh, held at the last October, uh, the Democratic Party decided to join with the Party of Hope uh, but unfortunately, it did not reach an expected result. So as a result, immediately after the election, the governor Koike resigned and as a leader of the party. And I was elected as the party's new leader. We are now the second largest opposition party with 51 members in the House of Representatives. We are also a relatively young party. The average age of our members is 49 years old. And I myself, 48 years old, the youngest among a major political party in Japan. The upcoming regular diet session will begin on January 22nd. So today, uh, over the next 20 minutes, I would like to tell you about our party and our aims for the future. Uh, let's start by looking at the first slide, who we are, okay? The party of hope and identify itself as reform-minded, tolerant, conservative party, uh, as stated in a party platform uh, please think of us as a moderate center party. As such, we will pursue three fundamental policies. First, we will pursue a realistic national security policy based on pacifism. We must take into account the situation is no clear as we pursue realistic diplomacy uh, diplomatic and national security policies. The second, we will pursue the social security system that ensures the health and safety of all Japanese citizens. 
We will seek to enhance the social security policies in order to correct income disparities and reduce inequalities. The third, we will pursue forward-looking reforms to create a new future for our e economy and establish an honest government that does not lie, mislead, or hide information. We will actively promote reform to eliminate waste of tax money and will not permit the government to hide information. And let's move on to the next slide, okay? It's messy. Um, in last year's election for party leadership, the security legislation adopted in year 2015 became an important point of debate. I believe that this security legislation contains a mixture of both acceptable and unacceptable parts. Therefore, when I became party leader, I instructed the party council uh, chairman, Mr. Nagashima, to consider revising those parts of the security legislation that were possibly unconstitutional. In particular, I instructed him to consider setting stricter standards for the new three requirements to exercising the right of self-defense, uh, exercising the right of self-defense, so that, for example, Japan would not be dragged into the American fight on the opposite side of the world. In addition, the possible amendments to constitution were another key point of debate in a policy a party leadership election. My view is that the Constitution should be discussed from a much broader perspective, including Article 9. However, with respect to Article 9, a focus should not be on expanding the use of force by the self-defense force. Instead, we should direct our full effort at establishing explicit restrictions on the exercise of military force. Noah, by the way, do we support Prime Minister Abe's proposal to insert an article that stipulate only to existence of the SDF, self-defense force? We intend on holding continuing constructive and careful discussions among our party members to decide whether or not to support changes to the Article 9. To permit a full discussion of these important matters, we will not set a deadline for their conclusion. Next, I would like to discuss my party's domestic policies. We regard the income disparity that is spreading throughout the developed countries as a serious problem. Therefore, we intended to promote domestic policies based on the following basic principles. The first, we will strengthen the redistribution function of policies to reduce income disparities. The second, we will pursue policies to raise incomes of the middle class. I would like to share some data describing the change in income of Japanese household from year 2000 to 2016. Uh, over this period, monthly disposable income in Japan decreased by 9.3%, while the monthly consumption decreased by 11%. In other words, in Japan, households has became, become about 10% poorer over the past two decades. Uh, please look at the next slide. Uh, this next slide describes a change in household disposable income in Japan from year 2011 to 2017. In the households with annual income of three million yen, 
disposable income decreased by approximately 200,000 yen per year. In households with annual income of 5 million yen, disposable income decreased by approximately 300,000 yen per year. In the household with annual incomes of 10 million yen, disposable income decreased by about uh, 500,000 yen per year. In addition, as a result of the tax system revisions, at the end of last year, households with annual incomes of 8.5 million yen or more will bear additional taxes. Thus, the disposable income of hardworking, solid employees is steadily decreasing. On the other hand, the next graph shows that individuals with the highest incomes in Japan actually bears less of the tax burden in relative terms. Uh, please take a close look at this graph. Uh, this graph shows the relationship between annual household incomes and applicable tax rates. The horizontal x-axis shows the annual income, while the vertical y-axis shows the applicable income tax rate for each income level. Because in progressive income taxes, the established policy in Japan, we would expect that the tax burden to increase proportionally as income increases. But that is not always the case in Japan. It is true that up to an annual income of 100 million yen, the tax burden does increase in proportion to the increases in income. But for those with the highest incomes, over 100 million yen per year, the tax rate actually declined. How does this happen? This answer has to do with the taxation of financial income. Of many types of income, the only one type of income, financial income, is treated differently from other kind of income. For financial income, a uniform tax rate of 20% is applied regardless of the amount of gain. Therefore, as the proportion of the financial income increases relative to total income, the total income tax rate is reduced, approaching a low 20% tax rate. As a result, total income tax rate for those with annual incomes of 10 million yen is about the same as those with annual incomes of 10 billion yen. Obviously, this is unfair. So we will ask those with the greatest ability to pay taxes via their fair share of the tax burden. We will strengthen the taxation of financial income and thereby reinvigorate the redistribution function of policy in Japan. Next slide. The party of hope will make the wealthy pay a fair share of taxes. When we talk about redistribution, we are often asked where the money to be redistributed will come from. Of course, we could not promote redistribution without also pursuing economic growth and structural reform. So next, I'd like to discuss our policies in regard to these areas. As you know, economic growth comes from, number one, labor, number two, capital, number three, innovation. That brings about productivity improvement. With this in mind, we might ask what the major obstacle to Japan's economic growth is. Without doubt, the greatest obstacle to Japan's future economic growth is its declining, de decreasing population. The next slide shows the historical change of Japan's population. The population of Japan was 33 million 150 years ago, 
during the time of Meiji restoration, increasing to peak of 120 million in year 2004, at the beginning of the 21st century. Thereafter, Japan's population has been declining, and even now continues to decline more and more rapidly. Not only is the population decreasing in total number, but the percentage of population in the most productive age range of 15 to 65 continues to decline as well, further exacerbating the situation. This decline in the most productive segment of the population has a significant negative impact, not only on industry, but also on national security and defense. It is clear that Japan will not achieve economic growth unless we solve the key structural issue of the declining workforce. Therefore, the party will hope we focus on providing effective solutions to this issue. Let me describe our approach. We believe there are three fundamental approaches to address the issue of Japan's declining workforce. First, a policy is to create a more supportive environment for child rearing. This is our so-called children first policy. Although the Abe administration has already started some programs to assist with child rearing, it is critical that we do more to increase the number of nursery schools and reduce the number of children who are not able to enroll in these vital programs. We must also expand the number of benefit scholarship. The second, we will pursue policies to develop an environment in which elderly workers are able to continue working vigorously for as long as they desire. We call this our health first policy. In particular, the party of hope will focus on countering dementia so that more Japanese citizens can live longer and more productive lives. In addition, the party of hope will help the elderly work efficiently in accordance with their ability by maximizing the development and use of suitable information communication technologies. And finally, we actively promoting the utilization of falling labors. We will introduce significant changes to regulations regarding the status of residents of foreign workers. We will introduce these changes instead of just fine tuning the existing technical internship program, a program that has been criticized for possible human rights abuses. This next slide summarizes our economic reform policies with respect to mobilizing Japan's human resources, enhancing child raising, rearing, and education policies, accepting more foreign workers and students, helping the elderly work depending on their abilities by using ICT. In addition, the party of hope that emphasizes the importance of unlocking the dynamism of the Japanese economy in other, words, other ways. In this regard, we believe that this is also important to mobilize financial assets to be used more efficiently to invest in rural communities and to encourage the development of entrepreneurial businesses, particularly to take part in the digital economy. A financial asset held by the com companies and households in Japan are estimated to be about 3,000 trillion yen in total. Roughly speaking, uh, 30 trillion US dollars. About 40% of that amount is held in the form of cash and bank deposits. The party of hope we use the tax incentives to encourage companies and households to put these idle assets to more efficient use as investments, wages, and consumption. Reforming a tax system to be both simpler 
and failure will also contribute to the invigorating the economy. The second, the Party of Hope will prioritize local development of rural communities. We believe these communities where small and medium-sized companies and farmers do business are uh, underutilized source of real economic power for Japanese economy. We will increase investment not only to repair aging bridges and roads, but also to construct new port and airport to enable the, these local businesses to gain direct access to fast developing Asian cities. In addition, the Party of Hope will consider revising the Constitution to grant greater authority and financial resources to local governments. And third, the Party of Hope will promote future-oriented reforms. We will do so without regard for vested interest. In particular, the Party of Hope will actively support entrepreneurship of startup business to put Japan at the forefront of the digital economy. At present, in Japan, the number of startup venture business is much too small, especially in the area of fintech. Japan's total investment is only one half of 1% of the total amount of US investment. In addition, it is said that the total number of unicorn companies, unlisted venture companies, valued at over 1 billion, is about 1,000 worldwide. Of these, about half are US companies. And China is the second. There are only one or two such companies in Japan. When I visited the inland city of Chongqing, China, last August, I was shocked at the wide penetration of cashless payment using smartphones. I feel a strong sense of crisis that Japan may be losing in these critical technologies to companies like Alibaba's Alipay and Tencent WeChat. Accordingly, the Party of Hope will support the development of the fintech technologies in the financial sector at the same time we will aim to establish the world's most advanced e-government system to integrate tax payment and social security benefit. We will also consider currency digitalization, known as the central bank digital currency, CBDC. Next slide. We as a reform-minded pro-business party why we will cooperate with other opposition parties in the diet and the coming national elections. We will not change our basic policies and principles discussed today. Actually, as a startup organization ourselves, we face, I face many difficulties and challenges. But at the same time, we have as big an aspiration as any startup venture company in the world. We believe the Party of Hope is the only responsible opposition party that has a viable opportunity to replace the LDP as Japan's ruling party after the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. We will go forward to facing the in internal and external challenges that Japan faces without fear of taking risks. The only things we have to fear is fear itself. I thank you for your attention and for your continuing interest and support 
for the party of Pope. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tamaki Sensei, about this presentation and for the numbers you provided. It's very important. We'd like to open the floor. The floor for your questions and answers. Please raise your hand if you have any question and proceed to the front mic and state your name and affiliation first. Uh, first question. I can't see there. Yes. Okay. By, by the time you make your question, I, I, let me. Let me ask uh, one question. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what is your party's foreign policy, especially regarding the uh, challenges facing Japan in the neighbor and in other parts of the world? Thank you. ま、あの、え、日米同盟、日米関係は極めて重要だと考えています。First uh, of all, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, we are taking as our basis for our foreign policy being a realistic foreign policy. In this regard, the alliance between Japan and the United States plays a very important role. 同時に、え、全てアメリカに従うという立場は取りません。先ほど申し上げたように え、外交安全保障政策において at the same time this does not mean that we defer completely to the United States in regards to our security and foreign or diplomacy policies. Well, we will pursue cooperation with the United States as I mentioned in my speech once again. This does not necessarily mean or this means that we do also have to avoid being dragged into wars which are being carried out by the US in other parts of the world. 関係はですね、and particularly in regards to the Arab countries or the countries in the Middle East, Japan maintains a very unique relationship with many of these countries. While we have no history of colonialism in that region, we are able to have, shall we say, a clean hand in regards to our relations or dealing with countries in the Middle East. For this reason, it is the policy of our party not to become involved or contribute to engaging conflicts in the Middle East. So, Trump in that regards, uh, in, re in relation to President Trump's recent announcement of uh, having Jerusalem uh, officially regarded by the United States as the capital of Israel, we are in strong opposition to this, voice our opposition to this, and call for withdrawal of this policy. え、at the same time it is said that we are now entering the age of Asia. In this regards, we believe that it is very important or will we will place importance on the relationship with China and other neighbors. 戦略的互恵関係という中国との関係を we also believe that it is important to look at how to deepen the strategic relationship between Japan and China, and we believe that this coming year will be particularly important in regards to relations between the two countries. My name is Hiro Kishida, right wing freelance journalist. I asked the same question to Mr. Erano, and I was going to ask you the same question again. Who is the head of Japan? 
Are you the head of your party, Party of Hope? Yes? Yes. Okay. Then who is the head of Japan? Is it Prime Minister Abe, or the people in general, or Ten no Heka? You know, the head of the state. Head of the state. Head of the state of Canada is Queen mm-hmm. Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. Head of state of Australia, Queen Elizabeth. Hi. Japan's head of state is Donald Trump. はい、えっと、フリーランスの辞書、右翼のジャーナリストの藤田と申します。日本の国家元首が誰なのかについてお伺いしたいと思います。まあ、あの、希望の党の代表では玉木先生がいらっしゃるんですけれども、日本の国家
宣伝テレビコマーシャルや、えー、CM などそういった、まあ、CM テレビコマーシャルや、まあ、あの宣伝などで広告などで、えー、規制が全く限られることがなく、まあ、それによって、まあ、一方的な意見を資金があれば国民に浸透させて一方的な、まあ、意見を語えてしまうんじゃないかとそういった、えー問題が指示されていますそれについて今後国会でこの問題を法律的に解決していこうとかそういったいう、えー、考えがあるのかどうかというのを伺いたいと思います。Uh, I am from No Border News. I would like to ask a question in regards to、uh, a public referendum in regards to constitutional amendments. In the current legislation of Japan, there are no regulations put on, for example, television or other forms of advertising and so on to be、uh, conducted at the time of a public referendum in regards to constitutional amendments.、Uh, therefore, those who have sufficient funds or money can put forward a certain view or unilaterally、um, promote a certain view within the public sphere. I would like to ask if you have. Any plans of introducing or questioning、uh, legislation in regards to this within the diet? Hi. The government of 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 the g o v e そのお金を使って望ましい方に誘導することが法律上可能になっていることについては私も問題だと思っていますですからこれから憲法の議論改正の議論が深まっていく中で公平公正な国民投票が行われるためにまあそういったそのアドバタイジングに対する規制などを入れるべきかどうかこれは党内でも議論を深めていきたいと思っています。Uh, when the Japanese Constitutional Committee from within the Diet visited Europe for an inspection in regards to、uh, various policies surrounding、uh, constitutions and referendum and so on, there was discussion that、uh, it, it couldn't be believed that this kind of、uh, advertising or buying in regards to、uh, referendums was taking place. I believe, of course, it would be extremely problematic if there were acts within Japan also where, for example, those with particular financial capacity or power would be using this to influence. A particular desired outcome in the case of a referendum. As we are looking at expanding or deepening the discussion around constitutional amendment, I believe that it is very important to look at how to ensure any potential public referendum would be conducted fairly and equally. And for the, or to this end, I hope that we can deepen discussion on regulations of advertising and so on within the party from now.、Mm. Yes. Yes, okay. okay, go ahead. Yeah, NHK. で失礼します。NHK の及川と申します。あの国内政治について伺いますが、あの今朝希望の党は民進党との間で統一会派をめぐって会談をされ、あの幹部が会談をされました。で、その中で希望の党はあの党としての考え方というのを。示していますけれどもこの示した案というのは、えー、希望の党がこれまで掲げてきた安保や憲法の考え方、えー、揺らいでいない堅持しているというふうに言えるでしょうかそしてまたあこうした案をもとにした統一会派の交渉というのは民進党そして、えー、希望の党内また有権者の理解得られるというふうに思われるかこの点を伺いたいと思います。Uh, my name is Oikawa from NHK. I would like to ask a question in regards to domestic politics.、Uh, this morning there was news of discussion with the Democratic Party regarding the formation between the Party of Hope and the Democratic Party of a joint parliamentary group、uh, within the opposition. I would like to ask in regards to the proposal which was put forward as part of this, can it be said that in regards to the security and constitutional policies of your party, forming such a joint parliamentary group and the proposal at hand would ensure maintaining the current Policy of the party in regards to these issues. Furthermore, I would like to ask in the continuing negotiations regarding the formation of this joint parliamentary group,、uh, do you believe that this is also something which will gain the、uh, understanding or agreement of the Democratic Party, your own party of hope, and also the people of the electorate? Hi, I'm going to say that the presentation is going to be a very 
、安全保障法制については、えー、容認できる部分と、容認できない部分が混在していて、だからこそ、政調会長に、えー、違憲の疑いがある部分などについて、見直しを行ってほしいと、まあ、指示をしたところであります。Uh, first of all, as I mentioned in my presentation in regards to the security legislation, there is a mixture of some parts which are acceptable and some which are not acceptable at the moment. Therefore, I made the request to our policy council chair to consider revision of those parts which could be unconstitutional. えー、沿った形で書かれておりますので、これまで、えー、代表選挙などで示した考えと同じです。And in the proposal which our party put forward to the DP this morning,、uh, the contents of this were written according to this same position, according to the position which I have held until now as well, including that which was expressed during the election for leadership of the party. Therefore, I think it can be said that it is consistent、uh, with the position until now. したがって、えー、民進党の皆様、そして有権者の皆様にも理解していただけるものと信じております。For this reason, I believe that it is something which will gain the understanding of both those within the Democratic Party and also the electorate. Thank you. Next question. We still have 40 minutes. Yes, okay, please. I'm going to be able to talk about the question of 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 I'm from the Asahi Shinbun. I would like to ask in regards to reform of the diet.、Um, within the debate, within the leadership of the LDP, there has been the discussion of changing to 45 minutes, for example. I would like to ask your opinion about whether this is something which should be welcomed, whether changes should be made, what kind of frequency, and so on. In the case of the LDP, there has been a discussion of changing to 45 minutes, and so on. In the case of the LDP, 一つの政党に45分、まあ、それぐらいの、まあ、45分長いとしたら、例えば我が党にはです、ね、私と安倍総理が党首討論するときは30分、まあ、これを毎週1回必ずやってくれるというのであればです、ね、外交に専念したいであろう総理、外務大臣、まあ、こういった方々についてはですね、予算委員会への出席などの回数は減らしていいと思いますが、ただ、国会の中で1回だけ党首討論をやったから、総理が国会に出ないでいいと、まあ、そういう話ではないと思いますね。ですから、党首討論をやるというのであれば、毎週1回。これがやるのであればですね、現在の総理の出席などのルールは変えてもいいと思いますが、中途半端なものであれば受け入れることはできません。Uh, first of all, to clarify, this is in regards to the timing to be allocated between debate between party leaders within the Diet. If we look, for example, at the case of the UK,、uh, there is 45 minutes guaranteed weekly. So every week、uh, this occurs per party is being allocated.、Um, of course, if this were the case, for example, of the debate between Mr. Abe and myself,、um, we could consider this 30 minutes and so on. But one of the key points here is looking at making sure that this is guaranteed to take place on a weekly basis, making sure that it does happen regularly. 
in that sense. While there are perhaps concerns being uh, expressed that the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister need to put sufficient time towards foreign policy concerns and so on. If this were to be guaranteed, then we could look at, for example, how to make adjustments in regards to the time allocated to attending the budget committee meetings and so on, for example. However, uh, if we consider that within the Diet, if there is only one discussion between the leaders of the parties, for example, and then after this, the Prime Minister would not uh, necessarily have to attend the discussions within the Diet, I do not believe that this should be the case. This is not what should happen. If there is this debate between the party leaders, this should be guaranteed to go ahead on a weekly basis. If such uh, considerations could be made, then I believe that it could be considered making changes to the current rules and so on regarding the Prime Minister's attendance. However, I believe that it should not be something done in just a half-hearted way, shall we say. Thank you. Next question. Yes, Siegfried. The Japanese government is thinking about to buy uh, new air warplanes F-35 to uh, station on the on the helicopter um, uh, um, of the co helicopter uh, uh, ship. Uh, so how I think this would change the current uh, the defense strategy of, of Japan. So how do you, how does your party see this? And in connection with this, would you? Uh, in favor to make the self-defense force to a regular force, like in other states. To a what force? Self-defense self force to a regular, regular. Uh, regular. who can deal in all kind of uh, uh, conflicts. Uh. はい、2つほど質問があります。今、日本政府が F35 機の購入を検討されているという報道があるんですけれども、もしそういったものを購入するのであれば、今の日本の防衛政策をまあかなり変えてしまうということになるかと思いますが、希望の党はその点についてはどういうふうに考えているでしょうか。また、あの次の質問が自衛隊に関する質問なんですけれども、自衛隊を、まあ、先週防衛から、まあ、あの通常のまあ軍隊といいますかに変えることにも賛成されますでしょうか。お願いします。はい、あの F35 の購入で日本の防衛政策が私はそれほど変わるとは思っていませんあの周辺自体が緊迫する中で一定の防衛力の強化というものは必要だと思いますがただ、えー、FMS というですね Foreign Military Sales という仕組みでアメリカからかなり高く買ってるんではないのかということについてはですね国会の中でしっかりチェックをしていきたいと思います。まあ、平時におけるシビリアンコントロールの一つとして、軍事費、まあ、その防衛費の使われ方はしっかりとチェックをしていきたいと思っています。Uh, first of all, in regards to the purchase of the F-35s, I do not believe that this would make such a significant change to Japan's defense policy. As tensions are increasing within the region surrounding Japan, I believe that a strengthening of the defense capability of Japan is necessary to an extent. However, one issue in regards to the FMS system or the foreign military sales, I believe that there is a possibility that these machinery are being purchased from the United States at a very high cost. And this is something which we should conduct full checks on in the diet. Looking at uh, civilian control of the defense budget and so on within non uh, emergency times within usual times and looking at how to uh, put in place sufficient checks on this defense budget is uh, something of importance. And the one thing is the military one. The military is the one that 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 is the 戦後私たちが大切にしてきた平和主義や、まあ、専守防衛といった考え方に基づく自衛権の在り方をしっかり守るべきだと考えています。
And in regards to your second question, I do not believe that the self-defense forces of Japan should be altered to become an army as in other countries. Uh, the issues of keeping a restricted defense uh, capabilities based on the pacifist post-war policy of Japan and also the defense-only policy which we have held in this country throughout these decades is important and something which we should continue to base uh, this policy on while also maintaining sufficient defense capabilities for the purpose of our country. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> Ego, please. Sari Yamasaki, Yamasaki Toshikoto Yimas, a freelance. I'd like to know what is your policy of uh, North Korean crisis and the abduction cases? フリーランスの山崎と申します。北朝鮮の危機についてのまあ立場、そして拉致問題についての政策を教えてください。はい、あの我が党は拉致問題を重視しております。で代表の直属の組織として、えー、対策本部というものを設けております。二、えー、人の拉致担当大臣経験者、えー、松原仁、えー、代議士、中山京子参議院議員。このお二人の拉致担当大臣に、えー、この本部の責任者をやってもらってますけれども、この15年間、一人も帰国をされていませんで、このことは重大な問題だと思いますし、従来のアプローチを変えていかなければならないと思います、これ、我々自身の反省も込めてですね、えー、従来とは違ったアプローチをしていくことが必要だと思っています。で拉致問題を解決するためにはいずれにせよ対話が必要ですですから今まあ北朝鮮情勢が非常に緊迫する中で圧力をかけていくことは必要なんですがどこかで対話をその対話の道を探らなければならないと思っていますのでそうした新しいアプローチについて党内でも今議論をしている最中です。Uh, as a party, we place significant importance on the abduction issue in regards to North Korea. We have established a headquarters for measures in regards to this, which is under the direct management of the party leader. And this is headed by two representatives who have experience of acting as the minister for the abduction issue in Japan. Uh, Matsumara, Matsubara Jin and Nakayama Kyoko uh, have experience as a minister and are both responsible for heading up this headquarters within the party of hope. The fact that within the past 15 years, not a single person or former abductee has been returned to Japan, has been able to come home to Japan, is a very important issue. And in regards to this, we need a change in approach, a new approach in regards to this. Uh, this also includes our own uh, regret for having not uh, made progress in this situation. Of course, dialogue is needed in order to pursue this. As the tensions of the DPRK crisis are remaining high, of course, pressure must be maintained. But at the same time, we also need to seek a path towards dialogue within this situation. A new pr approach is regarded or is required in relation to this. And within our party, we are currently discussing or debating options for this approach. Thank you. Let me ask a question. Uh, um, your party has no members in the House of Consulars? Three and members. You have three members. Mm. Okay, then I have no question about that. <laughs> あの司会の方から参議院についての質問があったんですけれども、あの国会議員が三人いらっしゃるということで質問はないとのことです。再びニュースプレートの犬です、えー、もう一回伺いたいのが、政府が昨年の12月ですね、シリアへの支援を強化するといった報道がありました、まあ、これはまあ要するにアサド政権への支援を強化するということで僕は理解したのですが、まあ、そういったまあ今、シリアでは非常に悲惨な内戦が起きていて、でそのお金が何に使われたかというのが、国民にとって非常に不透明であると。いうふうに思っておりますもしかしたらこれが虐殺に使われているかもしれないそういった疑念もあるのですがそれをどのようにチェックしていけばいいのかというのをお考えをお聞かせ願いたいと思います
Uh, I would like to ask a question in regards to Syria. In December of last year, the Japanese government gave support or strengthened its support for Syria, which could be considered as funds going towards the Assad regime. Well, of course, there is the tragic conflict underway in Syria at the moment. The issue of how these funds would be used is of great concern. And there are also concerns in regards to whether the usage of these funds is indeed transparent to the people of Japan. There is the potential that these funds could be used for example for killing and so on in Syria. I would like to ask if this is an issue which as your party you are planning to conduct checks and so on in the diet. あの、詳細を承知しておりませんが、多分支援の多くは おっしゃる通り、安倍政権になってからこの4年間ちょっとで日本円で言うとですね、まあ、え、ローンもその、ローンもグラントも民間資金も含めて、え、54兆円ぐらいの海外支援をしてます。で、そういった税金などが一体何
I met Tamakis president 20 years ago, and today is the <laughs> yeah. first time we meet Long again. Time, no see. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Please remain seated until our guest leaves. Have a nice evening. <laughs>